What's up guys, and welcome back to another episode of Cork to Glory. This is episode number 39. And we start today's episode off with a look at our fixtures coming in February. As you can see, four games and four away days as well. All in England, Nottingham Forest, Bristol City at Ashton Gate, uh, Coventry City, and then a trip to SE16 to take the Lions on at the Den in our final game of four coming this month. And for the first game of today's episode, on the back of transfer deadline day, which of course we did practically nothing, and the transfer window ending for January, taking on Nottingham Forest away at the City ground on the back of the defeat to uh, Birmingham City in the last game in the last episode that shock 1-0 loss at Turner's Cross and of course before that the exit in the FA Cup fourth round against Barnsley as well back-to-back -back defeats for the first time this season I was thinking right heading into this game our team that we used for our lockdown career mode last year Nottingham Forest away there was no Ollie Watkins there was no Morgan Bell or Jay Bell but there was Bell Bell yes yeah, Samuel Bell Bell ding 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 <laughs> I haven't done that in this series of course uh, he he scored the second of our two goals in the first half after Cunningham scored our first after a lovely cross by Barry Sharkey for the first goal and then three and a half minutes after the restart Ethan Elliott bags a goal as well in a big 3-0 victory and a good return to winning ways as well on the back of that defeat to Birmingham and of course going out of the FA Cup fourth round well, I, so, I made such a big point this season about trying to get to the quarterfinals of the FA Cup for the first time in the series so far yes we're still a championship team so that is still a very hard aim to do but after back to back trips to the round of 16 and taking on Barnsley as well for the fourth round, I felt for sure we were going to get to the last 16 again. I totally bottled that. And after the loss to Birmingham as well, well, let's just say it was time to get back to the revenge season mode that we've been in for most of this season. Second of the games today, second of the four in February, Bristol City away at Ashton Gate. And of course, this was the game and this was the ground where last season the Robins effectively, mathematically, ended our hopes of a playoff spot. But this season, it is totally different. Last year, we had the second worst away record in the division. Only Huddersfield Town, who finished rock bottom, had a worse away record than us. But this season, it's been totally different. It's been a revenge season. We've got one of the best away records in the division. We've only lost once in England and Wales this year. That was on match day two away at Medeski and therefore heading to this game it was time to get our revenge and we would as well. Won the game by two goals to nil. Samuel Bell Bell scored his 28th goal of the season with 15 minutes to go. It was such a bizarre goal as well. I was like how did he claim that? Like the shot was on target. It must have like brushed his sock on its way in and yet the game thought that was enough of a deflection to deceive the goalkeeper to give it to Bell Bell. Look, Samuel was greedy, man. Samuel was greedy. He's going for that Ivan Tony 40. Any goal he can claim, you best believe he's going to be calling for it. So, yeah, 2 the final score now and a big victory away at Ashton Gate. Third of four here, February, looking for three straight wins. Recar Arena, Coventry City. First team we ever faced in a championship last season that we lost here on the opening day by a goal to nil. But like I said, this different this season. It's revenge season and away from home, we are much, much, much better. Bell Bell scores our first in the first half, gives us the lead. And whilst Coventry would respond in the second half here, 12 minutes after the restart, a rare howler from Gavin Bazunu. It's always so frustrating when you can see the goal like that. It's like, what, what could I have done? You know, what more could I have done to stop that goal from going in? Nothing really. You've got to hold your hands and accept that's how football is sometimes. So Coventry back on level terms, and then eight minutes later, God, I've talked about this guy before. We love him. Big Leo. He's a fan favourite, a club legend already, but he is so. <laughs> so clumsy he's like Bambi on ice the guy literally just can't get his feet sorted no matter what it's a definite penalty I know I'm complaining on the sidelines but to be totally honest yeah I had no complaints holding the controller. I know, I know that was a penalty and I couldn't debate that one bit. So penalty for Coventry, a chance for them to turn the game on its head. Walker versus Gavin. But what you might have forgot is that this guy is the penalty killer. Yes, Gavin Bazunu last season stopped two penalties in the same game. And after this latest stop from 12 yards, it's now penalties faced free. Penalty saved free. Gavin Bazunu has not conceded a single penalty. He is the penalty killer. So Gavin keeps on level terms. Whilst we were still a man down, I was still going for a win and trying to get back in front despite being a man light and playing with 10. And so with 18 minutes to go, practically directly after the penalty, we came on the break. Tommy Healy turns his man and what a finish. This was round number 20 man series. He is, he is a, a decent player in this team, but he's just he's just not as quick as I want him to be. And I mentioned this before, like when I'm, when I'm using the 
wingers in this team. Practically for most of the season, you would see oftentimes it is Healy on the right and Elliot on the left, and they're both left-footed players. You've seen, you saw Elliot scoring the first game today, that they can score goals. They can get an assist every now and then as well. It's, it's the one thing they're lacking is not the technical ability, but it's raw pace. They've both got over 70 pace in the team, so that makes them quick enough. But as we know in FIFA, like 70 pace or 72, 73 pace on a winger, that that's slow by FIFA standards for a winger. That's not quick. That's slow. So we need them to get quicker. But that's the that's the one area that I'm finding hard to train up in this year's, uh, this year's FIFA. As you know, the development plans. I'm, I'm a massive fan of those in this year's FIFA. I think that they've really improved the game and uh, the game mode wholeheartedly. Massive. I'm a massive fan of them. But I do find it hard to train their pace up, and I don't know why that is. Even though there are a lot of development plans you can use on a winger that train their pace up quickly, for some reason it takes a while for those attributes to get a boost. Uh, regardless. Four wins from four in February, one 2 0 away at the Den. But as you can see, as we're continuing to chase Southampton with 11 games to go, the point gap remains at nine. Yes, it is so frustrating. Four straight wins, but we just can't catch the Saints right now. We're going to keep chasing them. We're going to keep chasing Southampton for the entirety of the rest of the campaign. And we still have to play them away at St. Mary's as well. But I just don't know if we're going to be able to catch them and win the title. That's what I want. That's what I really want. But what is a mandatory requirement for me now is that we stay in the top two. I think we're five points clear of West Brom in third. We've got a decent gap on the baggies in third right now and the first of the four playoff teams. But I don't want to drop into the playoffs. You know, I said at the start of the season, if we go to the Premier League, whether it's first, second, or via the playoffs, I don't really mind, so long as we're up to the Premier League next season. But now we've been in the top two for practically the entire campaign. All I want to make sure now is that we don't drop in to the playoffs. When you look at our fixtures coming in March as well, we've got some really favourable games. The posh Ipswich Town away from home, both of those teams right now struggling towards the bottom of the table. But the biggest one of the lot here in March is, of course, the visit of West Brom. Albion. We drew 2-2 two -two at the Hawthorns. They are still in third right now. They're still our closest threat to automatic promotion. If we can win that game, that's our final game of today's episode, we'll have an amazing chance to pull away and cement automatic promotion. Before that, we've got the two games against the Posh and the Tractor Boys as well to start March off, just to keep on chasing Southampton and try and stay in the hunt for a title. Taking on Peterborough, I remember at London Road, I thought I was going to thrash them, and we did. I think it was 6-2 in the end, one of our biggest wins of the series so far, but they actually had two separate leads in that game as well. So I was wary of the attacking threat they have, and I've mentioned this many times before, but after taking a two-goal lead here, Bell Bell bagging both goals as he now plus 30 for goals in the championship this season. He continues to chase that magic 40 that only Ivan Tony has had for me in a FIFA career mode. Um, sometimes, and I mentioned this before, sometimes the hardest games to win are not the games against the biggest and the better teams in the division, but against the teams that are towards the bottom of the table and have really, really poor records. You remember early on in the season, Ipswich and who was the other team? Hull City, two of the three newly promoted sides. I know he beat the posh, the other newly promoted side from League One. But against those boys there, Ipswich and Hull, the Tractor Boys and the Tigers, we could only manage draws. And this game was very similar as well. You know, think being at home here, being at Ireland, we should be able to dominate and win this game with these. We, we had two goal cushions on two separate occasions but the posh just would not give up Ricky J Jones got a late goal with five minutes to go to make me sweat a little bit and whilst Bell Bell did claim the match ball and we got the three points that was a, a really really tough game and it just goes to show you as well like FIFA and, and just like football it's, it's so unpredictable those are the games where I'm like oh yeah I can sit back in my chair and just barely concentrate but actually no those are the games where sometimes I've got to be switched on from first whistle to last to make sure I don't bottle it and make sure I get the three points that was definitely one of those games especially towards the end that game and once Jay Jones got that late goal there was a late chance for uh, for Peterborough as well where Bazzuni made a really important save that is FIFA sometimes man you think you're just gonna have a walk over and an easy victory and it turns out to be a really tough grind out victory so for the penultimate game of today's episode second one in March here going away from home to Portman Road to take on Ipswich Town here we get the early goal uh, in the game and make it 1-0 through Cunningham and there was 7 minutes to go before the break I think one of the best decisions I've made in this series is changing the captain at the start of this season from Keenan to Sharky that everyone here loves Rory is our most physical player you know I love the high stamina he's got but Barry Sharky is the true OG of the save out of the academy the first man out back in episode number 2 he scored our second goal of the game in a 2-0 victory there away in East Anglia 2-0 the final score and Barry Sharky doesn't he just look 
like a real captain, man. He's he's a fan favourite. He's a legend, man. I love the guy to pieces. So, yeah, final game to this episode. Uh, West Brom at home here at Turner's Cross and a chance to extend the point gap, I believe, to 11 if we could win this one over the baggies. So, of course, they would still have the game in hand. So, from the first whistle, like I said, it's revenge season. I wasn't targeting a point and just keeping the gaps it was. No, I wanted to extend it, make a big statement and say that we're going to pull away with automatic promotion. From the first whistle to last, I was on top and with seven minutes to go, I thought I'd scored the game winner through the real deal. Eamon Cunningham, known for his assist, but does chip in with a goal here and there as well. Our second highest scorer this year makes it 1-0. I thought the points were in the bag. With a minute and a half to go, I was desperately clinging on to the three points here. Well, you knew it was going to happen. Quick little through ball. There's Callum Robinson. And the number seven for West Brom levels things with 44 seconds of normal time to play. Late goals are so common in this year's FIFA, and we definitely got a taste of our own medicine after we scored that late equaliser at the Hawthorns. 1-1 the final score. The Baggies claim a massive point. Had they lost that game, I probably would have said for definite second place was guaranteed, but instead as we come into the final eight games of the championship season, it's not over yet. We're 11 points beyond the Saints now. I don't think we'll catch them, but we're only eight points clear of West Brom, and they've got the game in hand as well. They win that, they'll only be five points beyond eight games to go. So automatic promotion is still within our grasp. We still have destiny in our own hands, but it is not over yet. But that was this episode of Court to Glory Go, guys. We'll be thank you for watching. If you have enjoyed it, and if you have done, please do drop a like. Much love to you all. Have a fantastic day, and I'll see you for the penultimate episode of season four as we have a chance to guarantee automatic promotion, keep the pace of Southampton, or could drop into the playoffs as well. Wait for it. Very soon. <laughs>